Hello, everybody. Good evening. Happy Sunday. Hope you've had a great weekend. Welcome. I'm going to give it a minute to pop up over on YouTube for the people watching live. If you're watching this on playback, welcome. I hope to give you some great 2023 releases to check out. I'm going to be doing a series of these lives, and people seem to like the format, which is really fun. I'm glad people enjoy this. And so we're going to keep going with it because I'm having fun with it as well. And uh, you'll get a couple more of these from me. But tonight we're going to be talking about my anticipated horror, mystery, and thriller releases for 2023. I have 27 of them <laughs> to share. Um, so stay tuned. I think it's going to be fun. Hi, everybody. Hey, Beth. Hi, Tara. Hi, Lori. Hi, Megan. Glad you have your paper and pen ready. I've got lots to share. Hey, Emily. Hi, small channel. Um, yes, I love this. Go back through. Everything is also linked um, in the video description if you need links for any of the books that are currently available for pre-order. Hi, Cappuccino Crafts. Hi, Renee. Hi, Ash Loves Books and Owls. Hi, Mr. Rorosuri. Hi, everybody. How are you? Um, Kathleen has paper and pencil ready. Love it. Hi, Colista. Hi, Ty Savine. Hi, Pat. Hey. Okay. So, um, as per last time, I do have a lovely slideshow for you. Um, I think this is a nice way to go live and also give you the visuals without doing the editing in the same way, which is fun. Um, Renee, I have a feeling you'll be writing more down than last night. <laughs> that I mean, it's it's entirely possible. Hi, Kathy. Um, I know I'm missing some people. Hi, Cool Gamer. Hi, Valerie. Heather, we got a full house. People are excited about horror mystery thrillers. Hi, Simone. All right. So as last time, um, disclaimer is that release dates for these are subject to change. And there are probably some things that I'm missing, either because I don't know about them or because they're not things that interest me specifically. This is stuff I'm specifically interested in reading. Um, or because they, things haven't been announced yet. Things are always announced throughout the year. We're going to go in chronological order, beginning with January. Here we go. January. I've got three books on my radar. First up, January 14th, we're getting How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. I feel like um, his books are hit and miss for people. I, this one sounds intriguing. And this is a COVID book. It actually has COVID in it, which I'm curious to see how people feel about it. It says, every childhood home is haunted and each of us are possessed by our parents. Basically, this is adult children having to figure out what to do with their house after their parents died during the COVID pandemic. So like, it's going to be an interesting one. I didn't realize while I was doing research for this that that was like the premise, but that is the premise. Then January 17th, we are getting the US release of a previously published in the UK book, Tell Me I'm Worthless by Alison Rumfit. I actually read this one, so you'll be hearing about it in my mid-month wrap-up. It is intense. It has lots and lots of content warnings, but it's um, it's really good if you like horror that is heavy on social commentary. This is a book talking about trans identity and fascism. <laughs> so the negative reviews that are like, this is too much social commentary made me want to pick it up, and they were not wrong. It is a lot of social commentary, and it is very intense to read. Um, I do have a review on Goodreads. Again, I'll talk more about this one when I do my mid-month wrap-up, but I really liked it. So maybe check it out if that sounds up your alley. Tara loves Grady. Simone love Grady, but not sure if I want to read about COVID aftermath. I mean, fair, fair. I feel like people are going to be split on this one when it comes out. Lastly, January 17th is What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. This is her first book for adults, and I am excited to read it. I have an audio review copy from Neck Alley, so I'm going to be reading this one really soon. They were 11 when they sent a killer to prison. They were heroes, but they were liars, and it's set in the future. I've really enjoyed some of her um, like paranormal horror stuff for teens, and so I'm looking forward to seeing what she's going to do for adults in January. Marina has an arc of How to Sell Haunted House. Awesome. Congratulations. I hope you enjoy it. Heather is excited for Haunted House by Hendrix, like his 80s, 90s throwback references and his scream style storytelling. I'm with you. I, I feel like not everyone loves that, but that's fair. Um, hey, Nerdy Bee Library, added all three to your TBR. Wonderful. Uh, okay, let's move on to February. 
We have a lot in February. I've got five to talk about. First up, February 7th, we are getting Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones. This is the sequel to, um, now, of course, I can't think of it. The If somebody has it, tell me. But I really, really loved the first book in this duology. I think it's just going to be a duology. And this one is set several years after the events of that. The first one was like a love letter to slashers. I really enjoyed it. Stephen Graham Jones is a fantastic indigenous horror writer, and I am looking forward to this. This was originally supposed to come out in 2021 and got delayed, but it is coming out in February. Then uh, February 7th, we're also getting a debut horror novel that sounds really interesting. This is The Spite House by Johnny Compton. This is one I actually have a copy of here, and it sounds really interesting. A in Johnny Compton introduces us to a family with secrets and a house as mean and hungry as in any horror. Um, so this is a book that is a gothic thriller about grief, depth, uh, grief, death, and the depths of a father's love. So I'm really interested to see what we get. And this is a Black author. So if you're looking for more horror from Black authors, again, it's great to see a little bit more diversity in what's getting published. I think it could be good. February 14th, we have The Pledge by Kale Dietrich. This one is our first YA book, and I should let you know this is a mix of adult and YA that I'm putting in here. Um, the Pledge is being pitched as Scream meets Clown in a Cornfield in this YA horror novel featuring a masked killer who targets frat boys, and I believe this is also a queer horror novel. Sounds really intriguing. February 21st, we've got Where the Darkness Blooms by Andrea Hanna. I really love this cover. It's beautiful and creepy at the same time. It says it's a supernatural thriller about an eerie town where the sunflowers whisper secrets and the land hungers for blood. It sounds good. I haven't read it. We'll see how it goes. And then uh, lastly for February is Delicious Monsters by Lizelle Sambury. This is another one I have a copy of that I'm reading. I'm very, very excited for this. I love Lizelle. She is an author to so go check her out. And um, this is her first full horror novel. I'm excited about it. It's got a dual timeline. So there's a girl who sees dead people in Toronto, and then her mother inherits a secluded mansion. Something happens. We don't know what. A decade later, a girl is going to like uncover it and like prove that her mom is lying about stuff. I don't know. It. I, I feel like it's going to be great. So I'm looking forward to that one. All right, let's take a look at some of the comments <laughs> Like before I move on to the next month. I think that's how I'm going to do this for those who are wondering. Covers are killing it. Honestly, yes, the covers are really, really good. Oh, February 7th is your birthday. Happy future birthday. That's excited. Thank you, Renee. My heart is a chainsaw. Yeah, that is the first book before Don't Fear the Reaper. Um, appreciate you all for that. Thank you. I am also very excited for Reaper. Loved My Heart as a Chainsaw. I think it's going to be great. Uh, yay. This is great. Um, have been a fan of Kale Dietrich since you read his YA sci-fi debut in 2017. Okay, cool. A great gay writer. Good to know. I appreciate that. I haven't read from him before, but this one sounded interesting. I'm going to be reading it. Renee read Where Darkness Blooms. Let us know what you thought. I am very curious. Uh, a House and Secrets. Yep. Yes. Same. Um, House and Secrets is always a good one. Soft DNF after My Heart is a Chainsaw earlier this year. Maybe try it again next year and maybe pick up the sequel. Yeah, it's not um, not necessarily for everyone, but I, I really, really loved it. Yes. Scream meets Clown in a Cornfield. I'm glad people are excited about this one. Pledge does sound interesting. I agree. Yay. Um, so far, added seven. <laughs> We're doing well. We're only in February. You're welcome. Um, uh, oh, oof. okay, Renee. The cover and summary was nice. <laughs> Two and a half stars. Okay, I will set my expectations for that one. Thank you. We'll see how it goes. Pat, same. Very excited for Delicious Monsters. I think it's going to be a good one. The Pledge sounds interesting, even though it's YA, which, yeah, you don't usually read a lot of YA, Heather. So, yeah. All right, let's move on to... March. We've got three books in March. First up is another one that I will show you. This is Lone Women by Victor Lavelle. So um, this is his first historical horror novel. I think it's still got paranormal elements, but he's more known for, well, I mean, I guess he's written horror. It's more like fantasy with horror elements. And this one is a little bit different, but it sounds intriguing. Set in 1915. 
um, about a woman who carries an enormous steamer trunk with her wherever she goes. It's locked at all times because when the trunk opens, people around Adelaide start to disappear. If the year is 1915, Adelaide is in trouble. Her secret sin killed her parents, forcing her to flee California in a hellfire rush and make her way to Montana as a homesteader. Dragging the trunk with her at every stop, she will become one of the lone women, taking advantage of the government's offer of free land for those who can tame it. Except she's not alone. I, like, I feel like this is going to be great. Victor Lavelle's writing is fantastic. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one. Then um, March 28th, we're getting Into the Light by Mark Oshiro. This one is YA. I love Mark's earlier work. This one is a thriller. It's got a gay teen who's been kicked out of his family, another teen who is in a cult, like religious cult, and then an unidentified body is discovered. I, the, this one looks like it's going to be a hard-hitting thriller sounds really interesting. Lastly, March 28th, we've got A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher, who is having a moment. And I've, I, I'm hit and miss with her stuff, but I think her ideas are interesting enough and some of her stuff I've loved that I want to keep trying it. This one is a haunting Southern Gothic that explores the dark, twisted roots lurking just beneath the veneer of a perfect home and family. I love a Southern Gothic, so um, this definitely sounds like something I would enjoy. Um, Emily, yes, Victor Lavelle is great. And I uh, agree. Amazing lineup for March. Yeah, the cover for Into the Light is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I'm, and I agreed. Mark's newest book probably has difficult topics. It does look that way. But I think it's going to be fantastic. Okay, so Marina says Victor Lavelle's writing isn't for you. Fair enough. He does have great ideas. Not everybody's writing style is going to work for you. A lot of love for the Into the Lights cover. This is awesome. Um, yeah. The T. Kingfisher does look interesting. I'm I'm interested to see if it's one that works well for me. Pat says another one lone women on TBR. Great. Awesome. Welcome, Misty. Glad you made it. Uh, Into the Light. Yeah, it is, it is really stunning. It's a beautiful, beautiful cover. A House with Good Bones is an amazing title. Um, I do, I, I like this thinking that you can think of good bones in two ways, like the structure of it or literally bones. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's smart because you can, especially for a horror novel, I think it's going to be an interesting one. All right, let's move right along to April. And again, we've got some really interesting covers here. First one is April 4th, The Last Heir to Blackwood Library by Hester Fox. This one's interesting. It's got like a mystery element, probably will have a light romance element based on things I've read earlier from her. This one is set in post-World War I England about a young woman who inherits a mysterious library and must untangle its powerful secrets. I think it's, it's it should be interesting. She writes kind of a like genre blends, historical mysteries with paranormal elements and sometimes horror elements. I think it'll, it should be fun. Usually some romance thrown in there for good measure. Then, uh, April 18th, we're getting The Haunting of Alejandra by V. Castro. A woman is haunted by the Mexican folk demon La Llorona as she unravels the dark secrets of her family history in this ravishing and provocative horror novel. Very, very excited for this one. I don't remember who I heard about this from, but it, it sounds fantastic. And then lastly, April 18th, we're getting The Cherished by Patricia Ward. This is another YA one. Um, for fans of Claire Legrand, Rory Power, and Daniel Vega comes a visceral horror thriller in the vein of Midsomar, as one girl inherits a mysterious home from her estranged grandmother and a letter with sinister instructions. All three sound great. So I'm excited to see what we get from these. Um, yeah, try T. King, T. Kingfisher. Her work's really interesting. You have, oh, you've got the, an arc of the haunting of Alejandra. That's exciting. You'll have to let me know how it is because I'm really, really interesting, interested. Yeah, library books, always a sucker for those. Misty, I've been reading more horror books. <laughs> Yay! I'm happy to hear it. Same. The last few years, I've been getting more and more into horror. I think there's a lot of great stuff there for, for anybody, like with different levels of scariness, you know. Yes, the colors on the cherished cover are gorgeous. Also looking forward to the Hester of Fox book. I've really enjoyed some of her other stuff, so I'm curious to see what this one does. Yes. Yeah. Like, there are some amazing cover designers. I love all, all the love for, for the covers here. Um... 
Yeah, Heather, same. I didn't read her most recent book. You said Hester Fox is a hit or miss for you. I really liked her first two books. Her third one didn't work as well for me, but I, this is what I'm curious about. So yay. Yes, Emily, a La Llorona t retelling. I think it's it, it sounds really great. Um, is it just me or all of these horror? They are not all horror. Some of them have been mysteries and thrillers. So um, like in this case, Last Air to Blackwood Library is a mystery. Uh, what else? Into the Light is a thriller. A lot of, a lot of it's horror, but um, you know, honestly, I'm just throwing, this is where I'm throwing the things that I'm interested in. So <laughs> Um, just want to hear you talk about the books for now. We'll come back to add. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Oh no. The ratings for the cherished is already low. Yikes. Okay. Well, I'll let you know what I think. I have an e arc of this one from NetGalley. So like fingers crossed it goes well. Oof. Okay. I'm going to have to go take a look at those early reviews then. I mean, it's a beautiful cover. It sounds interesting, but you never know. All right. Let's go on to May, just two for May. First up on May 2nd, we're getting a novella, another one from Cassandra Ka. This is The Salt Grows Heavy, a dark and deliciously twisted mermaid tale. So this is like a horror novel with mermaid mythology where the mermaid killed her husband. And I, I don't know. Listen, I read Nothing But Dark and Teeth or Black and Teeth by Cassandra Ka, and it was beautifully written and interesting and weird. And so I will definitely be picking this one up. And then we have a YA mystery, uh, Warrior Girl Unearthed by Angeline Bully. This one is about a native teen who must find a way to bring an ancestor home to her tribe. I think it might have a paranormal element to it. I'm not 100% sure. And I believe it is set in the same community as Firekeeper's Daughter. So for people who enjoyed that, this is also related. And um, I think they both sound like they will be great. Love this. Mystery, horror, thriller, your favorite genres. That's great. Yeah, more mermaids. I think the creepy mermaid thing sounds really, yeah, horror mermaids. I love the, I love the love for horror mer mermaids. It sounds interesting. Um, have they read it or decided to rate it low because it was delayed? Oh, hmm. I don't know. Good question. Yeah, I'm excited to see something else from Cassandra Ka because uh, it sounds interesting. The song. <laughs> uh, Oh, someone really did not like nothing but black and sheath. Fair enough. Listen, I feel like horror is one of those things that like it works for you or it doesn't. And everybody has different feelings about it, which is totally cool. I loved Firekeeper's Daughter as well. I thought it was amazing. And I am excited to see more from Angeline Bully. I think it's going to be great. Valerie says she is a haunting by Tran Than Tran is a queer YA paranormal horror. Oh, coming out in February. Cool. I had not heard about that one. Thank you for sharing. That sounds great. Yes, cappuccino crafts, mermaids, dark, creepy, murderous mermaids. So um, definitely go check that one out. Uh, the Cherished is uh, Patricia something. Um, Patricia Ward is it is what it is. So yes, I love the the, the love for the pro horror mermaids. <laughs> they need to be fifty fifty. We can we can do both both kinds of mermaids. Fair enough. Fair enough. And yes, the cover designers do in fact continue to kill it, which is exciting. And Beth has also heard good things about She is a Haunting. Okay, I need to um, find this because while I'm thinking about it, oh yeah, oof, great cover. That sounds interesting. Yeah, February 28th, a house with terrifying appetite haunts a broken family in this atmospheric horror. Perfect for fancy Mexican Gothic. Okay, yeah, adding that to my interested list because that sounds also right up my alley. Um, yes, we do have a Native American title. <laughs> Ooh, oh no, oh no, it's a 2.7. Ooh, the cherished. Okay, I'm gonna have to, after this, I'm gonna go look at those, those reviews. Yikes, that is, 
that is not good. Okay, let's move on to June. Um, okay, so first up, Mayfly wins for the creepiest cover. Like, every time I look at this, I'm like, this is disturbing. I don't know that this is a book I want on my shelves, although the premise sounds great, and so I do want to read it, even though I, I don't know that I can look at this cover for that long. Um, this one is coming out June 6th. It is a novella. By day, Mayfly works at the happiest place in the world as every child's favorite ice princess. By the neon night glow of the sunset strip, Maeve haunts the dive bars with a drink in one hand and a book in the other, imitating her misanthropic literary heroes. But then somebody who comes into her life awakens something dark in her, and she starts to take on a persona inspired by American Psycho. <laughs> so, so messy. Yeah, I don't know if it is a novella. It might be a full-length novel, but... Um, female serial killer. So I, I feel like it could be great, but yeah, the cover is super disturbing. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Yeah, I don't want I know. I know. Like I want the book, but the cover creeps me out. Um so yeah. Next is Zero Days by Ruth Ware. This one is coming out June 20th. An adrenaline-fueled thriller that combines Mr. and Mrs. Smith with The Fugitive about a woman in a race against time to clear her name and find her husband's murderer. I enjoy Ruth Ware, so whatever she puts out, I will probably pick up. And then lastly, we have a YA novel that is kind of like it's like a witchy thriller, so it kind of like straddles the line between fantasy and thriller, but The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland, a darkly seductive witchy thriller where th though both men and demons lurk in shadows, girls refuse to go quietly into the night. That is vague, but I um, I had mixed feelings about her debut. Like I had problems with it, but also there were things I loved about it, so I'm really interested to read um, more from her. So yeah. All right. What do we got? Take a look at comments. Oh man, can't read horror house books right now. Oh, fair enough, Emily. Don't need any ghosties moving into a new place. That's that's fair. Yeah, the teeth are a lot. Like seriously, um, cover designers killing it with the big bloody hatchet. Very appropriate for the genres they are designing for. Agreed. Uh, agreed. I do love a horror novella. Yes, Mayfly is a book meant to be read digitally, not one I want to have physically. I am kind of with you, to be honest. It is super creepy. Thank you for checking. It is a full-length novel, 288 pages, so on the shorter side, but full. Yes, I think, Heather, I do think it is a Disney illusion. I think she plays like an Elsa-type character at Disney during the day. I, I mean, it sounds really interesting. Small Channel enjoyed House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. So intrigued. Awesome. And I agree, Cappuccino Craft short, Crafts short is a good length for horror. Um, yes, anything with an eyeball creeps you out. Totally fair. The cover for Intoxication. Wow. I, oh, I don't know what this is, but I'm going to have to look it up. Okay. Frozen inspired horror. Yes. Okay, the cover is disturbing, but like also amazingly designed. And no, you're not wrong. Like it is amazingly dis designed and it sticks in your head. I'm just like, it's it's horrifying, but like it definitely, definitely works. Um, Renee says, already more than romance and we're only on June. Yeah, Ruth's name is, no, this is not the final cover um, for Zero Days, by the way. This is, uh, good point, Renee. This is, this is a final cover to be revealed. So, yeah. The YA cover looks cool. I agree. And apparently the invocation's release date is pushed back for January 2024. Well, there you go. As I said at the beginning, all of these are subject to change, uh, even in the time it took me to put this together. So thank you for the heads up. It's going to be a while. Um, yeah, I am curious to see how the cover matches the synopsis. I feel like maybe when reading it, it'll make sense. I, I guess we'll see. Too many teeth. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Speaking of which, let's move on to July. Um, some very exciting things happening here. First up, July 11th, we have Burn the Negative by Josh Winning. Some remakes aren't just a bad idea, they're deadly. Journalist Laura Warren is mid-flight to LA when she learns that the streaming series she's about to report on is a remake of a 90s horror flick, a cursed 90s horror flick, the one that she starred in and has been running from her whole life. I love this premise and it just, it sounds really intriguing. I wanna read it. Then on July 18th, we have 
Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle. So Chuck Tingle is known for writing like really out there romance stuff. And this is his first traditionally published book. And it is horror. This is a Syrian earnest horror debut about the demons the queer community faces in America, the price of keeping secrets, and finding the courage to burn it all down. Um, it is set at Cap Camp Damascus, which is the self-proclaimed most effective gay conversion camp in the country. So this one is going to deal with some intense topics, but um, definitely one that I would like to read. I'm really interested in this one. And then lastly, one of my favorite authors is releasing yet another horror novel on July 18th, Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. This one is a fabulous meld of Mexican horror movies and Nazi occultism, a dark thriller about the curse that haunts a legendary lost film and awakens one woman's hidden powers. Silvia Moreno-Garcia just doesn't miss for me, so I am very excited for this one. Um, Misty Same, so excited for Silver Nitrate. <laughs> Those French lie, yes. Um, yeah, the Silver Nitrate cover is reminiscent of vintage horror flick posters. If anybody is interested in how um, Silvia Moreno Garcia's uh, covers get made. If you join her Patreon, she does posts about the cover design and they're super interesting. I joined because <laughs> I love her and want to support her, but also it's just really interesting to get an early look at covers and hear about kind of what went into it. So for anybody who's also a fan, you can do that. Um, yeah. So I am also curious to see how Chuck Tingle's horror is going to be. Agreed. There are urban legends about several 80s and 90s horror movies that are cursed. Yes. So I think the idea of doing this as a um, as a book sounds interesting. Renee says there's teeth in the middle book too. <laughs> it's true, but not nearly as many teeth. So uh, small channel is hyped for Burn the Negative. Wonderful. Okay, we need more eyeballs staring at me. I can look again. <laughs> yeah, sorry, the, the eyeball from before is gone, although we still have some some creepy eyes. <laughs> so yeah, I am all very excited for, for all of these. It'll be great. All right, next up, let's move on to August. Three books in August, the first two. Oh, and this one actually has the one middle grade book that I put on this list, Don't Want to Be Your Monster by Deke Moulton. This just sounded fun and interesting. It comes out August 1st, and it's about two vampire brothers who must set aside their differences to solve a series of murders in this humorous and delightfully spooky novel for young readers. I just thought that sounded great. I will probably pick it up maybe for my kids that I would throw it on here. Um, then August 1st, we're getting another Kate Alice Marshall. This one is YA, The Narrow. It is about a ghost haunting her boarding school who uncovers a teen girl's best kept secret or like the teen girl's best kept secrets in the boarding school. I love a boarding school thriller horror thing, so I think it'll be fun. And then lastly, this is interesting. We have Dark Corners by Megan Golden. This is a return to the main character from the book Night Swim, which I really liked. And uh, so Rachel Crawl, the true crime podcaster from that book, returns to search for a popular social media influencer who disappeared after visiting a suspected serial killer. Um, so if you enjoyed Night Swim and kind of want more of those characters, this sounds interesting. And I have really enjoyed everything from Megan Golden, so... I, I'm pretty much picking up whatever she's putting out at this point. I think she writes really um, thoughtful books about difficult topics, which personally I think are done well. So yeah. Um, yes. Kid vampires. Oh dear. Indeed. Yep. Uh, let's see what else we have. On the cover of Camp Damascus, are those supposed to be mountains in the background? The whole place looks like someplace no one wants to be. Yes. Yes. I think those are mountains. Also, um, if you Google Camp Damascus and don't include the word book, you will get pictures of like some Christian summer camps. <laughs> so, it's really interesting. Um, yes. Uh, really love the cover for Don't Want to Be Your Monster. Same. I think it's a really cute, cute one. Middle grade sounds fun. Digging the covers. Hello. Hi, Kiki. 
Yes. Oh, they're Jewish. Oh, that's right. Thank you. I had forgotten about this. This is also exciting. They're Jewish vampires, which is great because apparently one big issue with a lot of um, vampire stories is often the way that they're told is rooted in um, anti-Semitism and things about blood libel. And so getting something told from a Jewish perspective that avoids that, I think, sounds great. So go check it out. Yeah, purple teen boarding schools. I do like the purple. It's nice. Yeah, I like Megan Golden too. I think her books are really interesting and thought-provoking. Heather, don't want to be your monster. I'm picturing Damon and Stefan from Vampire Diaries, but in middle school. Oh, that's, yeah, that's great. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I love how the tagline makes it seem the river is a whole character. Oh yeah, they say what the river takes never returns. They are wrong. It does, you're right. <laughs> It's interesting. Yes, Megan Golden wrote The Escape Room, um, which was a fun thriller. Agreed. It's also a face. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Let's move on. Um, there's one. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I've got two more. That's most of what I have, but I've got two that don't have covers yet. Uh, one that also doesn't have a date. So September 15th, we're getting One of Us Knows by Alyssa Cole. This one does not yet have a cover, but it sounds interesting. A riveting thriller about the new caretaker of a historic estate who finds herself trapped on an island with a murderer and the ghosts of her past. I'm really excited about this. I enjoyed Alyssa Cole's other kind of horror thriller, and I'm not surprised to see her move moving away from writing as much romance like I feel like the last couple of romances she released I was like I feel like she's less interested in the romance piece of this and more interested in other things and so I think maybe it's like a good move for her to write some other stuff at the moment um so I'm excited to pick this one up and then at some point in the fall we are getting The Bitter End by Alexa Dunn and that's going to be another YA mystery that I think will be fun but we don't have a date or cover for that yet so those are my 27 uh, anticipated horror, mystery, and thriller books. Again, all of them are linked down below for those that already have um, pre-order stuff available. Hopefully that was useful for everybody. And I'll be back over the next week or so a couple more times to do these lives. Since people seem to like this format, I think I'm going to stick with it. Um, I'm going to have if you missed it, last night I did one for romance releases, and then I'm going to be back with one for YA and middle grade sci-fi fantasy, and then one for adult sci-fi fantasy. They're, like Because those are my two biggest, most read genres, I had so many books in them, I couldn't do them all in one the way that I did for these genres. So you can expect to see, see more of that. Um, yeah. Another, yes, another Alyssa Cole. <laughs> you had me a trapped on an island, giving me closed circle vibes. Yes, indeed. The bitter end. Yes, it does sound fun. I'm excited for it. Um, oh, yeah, there is a new graphic novel series called The Night Eaters. Actually, good point. I am curious about this one. Marjorie Liu, who wrote Monstrous, wrote The Night Eaters, I believe, and it's like a horror graphic novel series, and it, it does look interesting. The art's really pretty. The first one is out already added all of them. I love it. I'm glad this was fun. Thank you, everyone. Oh, here we go. Horror series by the creators of Monstrous. Exactly. Thanks, everybody. I hope you had fun and added lots of new books. I think this will be fun. Um, Misty, thank you. Volume two of Night Eaters comes out in 2023. Perfect. Have a good night and let me know in the comments down below what book in these genres you are most looking forward to reading because I think there's a lot of great ones coming out. Thanks, bye, guys, and uh, have a great end to your weekend and start to the next week.